Now there are some Canadians who seem to enjoy winter more than any other season, who embrace the cold weather and really get out there every day. I do not claim to be one of those people. But I did sign up for a month of the winter season on Montreal's bike sharing system. And so this is actually the first time in my life winter biking. Um, not to say I've never taken a bike ride in the winter season, but to actually consider doing it on a somewhat regular basis. This is a new experience for me. And on this short bike ride, I wanted to share a few thoughts on what it's like here in Montreal. But if I get lucky, and this bike lane to my left, which I'll be taking, is not snowy or anything, then it should be a fairly pleasant ride. Look at this, beautiful. Now, I do have to say that when the snow first fell, uh, I made a video about that snowfall a week or two ago. This bike lane was a mess. I tried biking in it once. It was icy, it was snowy, it was difficult, it was borderline unsafe. And so on a day like that, I would not have been attempting to make a video like this. <laughs> I was more concerned with survival. But today, due to a mix of, I mean, they, they do plow the, the bike lanes. But more importantly, we actually had some freezing rain that has washed away most of this, almost all of the snow, in fact. You can see some snow to the, to the right of me, of course, but and in the center divider, evidence that the snow did fall. By the way, always be careful on crossings like that. Another thing to consider on w winter biking is that it's dark, more hours of the day, and you are by nature harder to see as a biker. And so, anyway, yeah, there's just a few bits of snow left due to some warmer weather and freezing rain, which kind of washed a lot of the old snowfall away. But equally as important to consider as the snowfall is the temperature. <laughs> you can see I'm wearing gloves and without these I would not be biking because when you are, well I mean you guys can <laughs> fill in the blanks right, when you are moving at a greater speed you are feeling that chilly wind even more and so you really need to dress even warmer than you usually would when you are walking around the city. Now I would say that your core temperature stays relatively warm because you are getting your heart rate up. I'm actually breathing a bit heavy right now because I'm going up a hill. but. Uh, So all that to say, you know, your legs and your core, your chest, all that stuff will be nice and toasty, but your hands and your face, which are taking the brunt of the wind, <laughs> can get chilly. Oh, you know what? Here's another issue with winter biking in Montreal. There used to be a bike parking spot right here, which I was about to take. But they've actually taken away a lot of the uh, 
different parking spots. As I understand, there's a couple of reasons for that. There's the fact that less people are using the app, but also I think the snow plows um, didn't want so many of the bikes around, so. Uh, don't tell me I need to go back down the hill. Okay, I'm gonna go. Actually, I'm gonna continue into the park. That'll be nice. I guess this has turned into a little review of the winter uh, Bixie experience here in Montreal. I would also note that for anyone who specifically uses the Bixie app a lot, you will know this. When you go on Google Maps and you type in Bixie, it will show you all the available spaces for parking. And in the summertime, they're, they're all over. Like, it's like almost every block has one. But when the winter season started, I was checking Google Maps and they still showed all of the old stations. And so it was very confusing at first to find out, okay, why is it telling me I can park somewhere that doesn't exist? So, you know, in case any Bixie staff comes across this video or anyone trying to work to improve the system, I check Google Maps before I check the Bixie app, so I think that's a big thing that has to be updated as soon as possible. But I would also point out that people using the bike in the wintertime will have shorter patience than people using it in the summertime because, as I mentioned, you're cold, your fingers are freezing. Now, a moment ago, someone passed me who was on a normal bike, which is obviously another option. I'm curious how the uh, thin wheels perform in the ice and snow. I'm not really sure how that compares to the thicker wheels we have on the bike share, but um, actually here we got some ice and snow too. And if I'm not mistaken, right up there is the, the parking spot, so we're going to get some real winter biking after all as I make it up this. <laughs> No, we path. Look at this. Now, I actually stepped off the bike just for a moment because this is this is a skating rink, <laughs> and uh, like right now, I'm holding the brake. bike can still move, right? Because it's very slippery on this path. As entertaining as it might be for some of you to uh, see me crash on my face, that is not the intent today. Oh, but I will try to bike this last little bit. <laughs> okay. Well, that was an adventure. Of course, walking down this hill will also be an adventure when it's this icy. Okay, it's actually not like a total skating rink up here. It was at the bottom though. 
Well, <laughs> almost flipped. So I suppose if I'm being fair to the winter bikers, I need to point out that walking in the winter when there's no no um no salt or anything on this ice can be equally difficult. So if I'm pointing out the flaws with one form of transportation, I should point out that there's really no good options other than uh, flying south <laughs> somewhere that does not have ice and snow. But uh, in all seriousness though, like look at the number of tracks. There are some braver souls out there who are clearly just zipping through this ice and snow. The fact that I was not able to, I would say is a mix of the fact that I was filming a video and also just my inex inexperience with this kind of terrain. For example, when I was well, I used to ski quite a lot. And believe it or not, I was pretty good. I like to go fast. I like to I could do all the double diamonds and all the pretty much everything the mountains had to offer. And when you get good at something like that, you can easily go very fast but be under control because you can feel, oh, you know, I'm sliding on the ice in the wrong direction. Like my skis have lost the connection and you know how to slow down correctly or if necessary, fall correctly, which is also important. And if someone who is skiing for the first time, for the first few times, sees you, they might think that person is crazy going that fast, zipping through the snow and ice. But when you're experienced, you know how to do it. And I'm sure if you're a Montrealer who grew up biking four seasons, then you have no problem zooming through some of those little patches of ice. How the winter season will progress, I'm curious to see. If you're a winter biker, oh my god, <laughs> winter driver is having some problems too. But yeah, if you're a, if you're a winter biker and you have any advice for the newbies out there, let me know what you think. Hope you have a great day, and I will catch you next time.